Hey folks, I'm back. It's UTB Brad with UTB Blogs, and I am here again with my BlackBerry Key 2. The last time I was here, I was speaking about something that is just very important and integral to a BlackBerry phone, and something that just really stood out on my first impressions, and that was the keyboard, of course. Uh, this keyboard can't be beat. I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it. But there's something else that's really integral and really important to a BlackBerry, and that is the privacy and security. And with the BlackBerry Key 2 and the BlackBerry software, I think they really stepped it up this time. Okay, so I've said it before and I'll say it again. Privacy and security are two entirely different things. They're usually spoken about together and they're usually kind of combined in a sort of way, but they really do mean two different things. Security, to me, is protecting you from getting hacked. It's stopping somebody that's not supposed to be in your phone from getting into your phone. And BlackBerry cannot be beat in that standard. Honestly, if you can root a phone, it's not secure. And BlackBerry Android, up to this point, has not been rooted, and it can't be rooted. That means that the most detrimental malware is not going to hurt you. You can load it up on your phone. Nothing's going to happen. It can't root your phone. It can't take access away. Another type of malware that is problematic and is usually adware and things of that nature kind of requires the user to do something silly it requires the user to go and give that malware permission to take control of their phone. Don't do that. So as far as security is concerned, BlackBerry does what BlackBerry's always done, and they keep us secure on a level that no other phone company has been able to do, and they've got a proven track record of that. Privacy, on the other hand, is another beast entirely. Privacy comes down to what you want to share and what you are allowing to be shared through different apps and different websites and different things that you do. And that was one of the main complaints from us BlackBerry users when BlackBerry went Android was because what about our privacy? Because we know that Google's out there collecting all this information on us. Well, the fact is they were collecting information on us even on the BlackBerry 10 phones. If you surf the internet, it was collecting information. If you were using YouTube, it was collecting information. If you use Gmail, it was collecting information. The device you're on doesn't really make a change to the amount of information that Google or Facebook or any of those other monolithic companies out there are collecting on you. They're tracking your browsing, they're tracking your viewing, they're tracking all of that. If you don't want to be tracked by Google, don't get online. It's that simple. Unless the world changes, that's the way it is. And I am hoping that the world changes, but for now, it doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. But with BlackBerry Android, BlackBerry really increased our privacy controls. And they did that on the Priv, the first, first run of the BlackBerry Android, with the DTEC app. The DTEC app gave us the ability to see what's happening on our device. This is something that we hadn't seen before. We hadn't seen it on BlackBerry OS, we hadn't seen it on BlackBerry 10, and we certainly didn't see it on any competitor's phone. Right before the Key 2 came out, the DTEC app was updated. The visuals kind of changed. The dashboard went from looking like a speedometer to looking like a safe. The basic functions are still there. So when we open the DTEC app, we're presented with the dashboard and the dashboard shows us the overall privacy setting and security setting of our phone. Now in this case, I'm on excellent. If, the, if it, I scanned it, which you can do just by pushing the button, and it came in at a different level, then it would tell me what the issues were. And I could go in and I could decide, is this something that I want to change? Is this something that I want to leave it the way that it is? There are certain times that I've had developer mode on my phone and in that case it's not going to be excellent it may be good or fair or something along those lines it also gives us the ability to see if there's been any certain events that's happened that we should be concerned about we can look at our system 
and see everything that is in the green on my phone and we would see if there is something yellow or red if we chose to change some of those system settings. And finally, this is what's most interesting and that is your applications because this shows us what our applications are doing. Now this is something that we had no idea what was going on really ever before on our phones on, a, on even a BlackBerry phone. We would install apps. We'd give permissions. We would know that this application needed this permission. I mean, obviously, like Facebook's going to need access to your contacts. Instagram's going to need access to your camera. Uh, an SMS texting app is going to need access. All these apps need access to these things. And this is something that comes as no surprise to anybody. And we just normally check them off. Now, you get a little weirded out when there's like a flashlight app that now wants access to your contacts because there's just no reason for that. But on the applications that ask for access that make sense, we give that access and we don't expect anything funky to be going on until we've loaded up the DTAC app and we see some weird things taking place. We will see an app that we haven't used in a week that's accessing our contacts thousands of times. That's something I'm not comfortable with, and it's something that I never even considered on BlackBerry 10 and something I never considered on BBOS, but there's really no way that we knew what was happening. Now on BlackBerry Android, we know. As an example on my phone, I've got the Fitbit app. This is an application that's carried over with me from different phones. I, I don't wear a Fitbit anymore. I don't really use the Fitbit. I have open the Fitbit app because I was showing somebody something on the app a few days ago and I noticed that it's got my location it's used my location on there when I go into the app I see thanks to DTEC that there's been one foreground event and that probably was when I logged into the app to show that person something about the app in the background it has got my location 223 times. Now to me, that's not cool. That's not something that I am too happy with. And because of that, I will go in and actually because I'm not a Fitbit user at this point, I will be deleting the Fitbit app. Now if I was a Fitbit user, I may just turn off my location settings. Or I may be okay and I may trust Fitbit and I may be fine with the fact that it's tracking my location 223 times in the background within the last few days. Again, that's something that we did not know before. It's something that we didn't have access to before. And that's something that DTEC has brought to us on our BlackBerry Android phones. There's another type of privacy though, and that privacy isn't just what our applications are doing. It's privacy that is a little more inherent to the user. It's privacy about things that we may not want other people seeing, it may be something that we're doing not so good on our phone. Come on, folks. You know you do things you're not supposed to be doing on your phones. You can either stop doing that, which would be the smart thing to do, or you could use the new tools that BlackBerry gave us to keep us private, to keep those private moments just a little more private. And of course, I'm talking about the Locker app, which has seen some great improvements on the BlackBerry Key 2 with the Locker app, and I will use my speed key to get into it. In order to get into the Locker app, you have to either set it up with a password or a fingerprint. You can choose how you want to open it. I've got mine set with a fingerprint. And within that, you have your private gallery where you can put private photos. You have private files where you can put private files. And you have now a Firefox focus browser. This is a private browser that is essentially incognito mode. Your history is deleted. It's removed when you're done browsing. And it's not really leaving a trail of where you've been and what you've done. So if you have some browsing that you'd like to do and you don't want other people jumping on your phone and seeing what websites you've gone to, there you go. That will work for you. In addition to that, you can now add other applications to the locker. If there's an application that you have on your phone that you don't want somebody digging into your phone and looking at, maybe you have a dating app. Maybe you have an image viewer. Maybe you have just something that you don't want a friend looking at when you hand them your phone 
to make a phone call. It's really easy to add applications there now. You just hit the plus button and you choose add apps and then it pulls up all of your applications and say in this case if I didn't want somebody doing my Amazon shopping on my phone I could simply add that app to the locker and now it's hidden away inside my locker if I hand this phone to somebody else they're not going to jump into my Amazon they're not gonna see what I've ordered they're not gonna jump in and order something else for me it's hidden away in my locker protected by either my password or my fingerprint and it works just like it would on any other case. Something that is a carryover from pr the previous version of the locker is you can take photos directly into that. So if you were going to go take a photo that you didn't want somebody else seeing, you could, this is my recorder here, but you can go into your camera and instead of using the camera button to take the photo, you could use the fingerprint button and then that puts it away in the locker. BlackBerry is already known for its security and with their entrance to BlackBerry Android and the entrance of the DTEC app they really impressed me with privacy tools and controls that we had just never had before. With the later edition of the locker it gave us even more privacy tools and it was a different sort of privacy. It was something that you could feel safe handing your device over to somebody else. Not just about the applications and what they're doing in the background or per some presumed attacks. This is just knowing that what you want protected from your friends and family on your phone was protected from your friends and family on your phone. Now with the key too, they've even improved that locker app in ways that I wasn't really expecting but I'm really excited about. Personally, I do use the photo gallery. I do use the files. There are th things on my phone that I don't want, you know, coworkers looking at. I don't imagine I'll be using the browser. I don't know. I haven't had any need to yet. I've actually only opened the browser once just to see what it looks like. But I know that there is a huge market out there for incognito browsers and you've got one built right into your phone, right within your locker. What I will be using a lot of is the ability to add app applications to your locker any banking apps, any shopping apps, anything that may have access to your financial information, I would really recommend putting that app in your locker. There's no reason for it to be out there and available to anybody. So on my last video, I kind of set a bit of a precedent of saying I was going to do these short videos and give something I loved, something I hated, and something I thought could be a little bit better when I do these videos and when I'm talking about these sections of the phone. So in this case, what I love, obviously, BlackBerry security, BlackBerry's commitment to privacy and giving us the tools that we need to be in control of our own privacy for something that I hate. Something that I hate is more of an annoyance and it's funny because what I hate is the fact that it's working the way it's supposed to. When you're in the browser and you back out of the browser or when you're in the files and you back out and you go somewhere else and then you go back to the locker, it does exactly what it is supposed to and has you use your fingerprint or your password again to get back into your locker. Yes, it's annoying, but yes, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So it's something that I may groan about every now and then, but if they did it any other way, it would not be secure it would not be private. Now for something that I wish could be done better, this is kind of weird and this is just something that I tested out using that Fitbit app as I spoke about earlier. And what I did was I put a separate instance of the Fitbit app within the locker. I signed into the Fitbit app within the locker and I had the Fitbit app within my regular list of applications. So I had the Fitbit app in two places. I signed in in the locker, I left the locker, I went back to the other instance in the public area of my phone and opened up the Fitbit app. I was already logged in because I had logged in from within the locker. Now again, this is something that I expect is working exactly the way it's supposed to be, but I do wish that there is a way perhaps that they could have two separate instances of this application. If you chose to have an application 
in your private locker and you chose to have it in your public section of the phone, it'd be nice if they were completely separate. It would be taking the BlackBerry Locker really and turning it into more of a BlackBerry UEM type of product where you had your workspace or private space and then you had your public space. I don't expect that to happen, but I gotta be honest, I was kind of hoping that was the case when I tested it. So this has been UTV Brad with UTV Blogs talking about the privacy aspects of the BlackBerry Locker and DTEC on the new BlackBerry Key 2. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button so you'll be here for the next video when I talk about, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about, but we'll see you then.